We're turning now to the move to reduce the settlement cycle to the day after a transaction, so-called T plus one settlement cycle. This shortened cycle will force the industry to automate manual processes and upgrade technology and solutions to meet the constrained timelines. Moving to a T plus one settlement cycle would also have a significant impact on the financial industry, especially for cross-border transactions, and it'll accelerate the transformation in post-trade industry. And joining us now to explore the challenges and benefits of the T plus one settlement cycle are Samuel Riley, CEO of Clearstream Security Services. And we welcome back Jonathan Ehrenfeld, head of security strategy at Swift. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us here. Towards the end of day, t uh, day three, I guess, of Cyboss already. It's hard to keep track. It all starts to blend <laughs> together, blend doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Um, uh, so I'll start with, uh, with Sam. Uh, what are the main challenges and considerations in implementing a shorter settlement cycle, especially for cross-border transactions? And, uh, and then I'll pass over to John to ask your, your viewers here as well. But Samuel, if you, can, if you can kick us off. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think one of the challenges is that obviously, particularly, you know, the T plus one will be for the US and, and, and Canada initially. Uh, and you've got a, a large amount of international investors from Europe and from Asia. Um, and of course, they've got to adjust their operations to be able to fund in time, to be able to put cash liquidity in time, to be able to get the instructions in time. And it's really less about the problems that will be potentially here in T from T plus one, but how the clients then deal with that in the value chain through their systems and the changes they're going to have to make potentially to be able to take out some of the, the, the slowness in their systems or even intermediaries in that chain to be able to reduce the number of uh, steps that happened before, yeah. obviously the trade then gets settled on T plus one. And John, what's your view? Uh, yeah, I mean, w w the, the fact that this is, you know, happening in the US and Canada, it doesn't mean that this is not, has an impact outside. And what we see in our network is that a lot of the cross-border transactions that are actually ultimately settling in the US or Canada, especially in the US, are coming from outside, right? It's coming from Europe or they're coming from Asia. And that means that, you know, we're talking about a very reduced time to make sure that everything happens in time. Mm -hmm. And John, given the, the different time zones around the world, how can the settlement process be streamlined to ensure that all market participants are able to settle their trades on a T plus one basis? Yeah, I mean, the time zone thing, it's very important because if you think about T plus one, you have one day to settle, as you mentioned in your introduction. If you then add up the fact that you have, in some cases, 12 or 14 hours of difference between the region where that originates and the region where it settles, you basically are reducing the time that you have to settle by 80%. Mm. So the challenges are huge. And then automation will all only the on be the only solution that you can do, right? Sam, what are the, the funding and the, the FX implications for, for market participants then, uh, particularly in terms of the need for additional liquidity? Uh, how can these implications be mitigated? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, well, uh, as John was saying, so, you know, there's a very short time span, time span before they uh, uh, can obviously send the instructions across. But funding the account really means also that they need to get the cash liquidity onto the accounts. Um, and I think, you know, some of the combinations of things that they're going to have to do, you're going to see a lot more segregation of clients' accounts uh, to make sure that, you know, you mitigate the number of fails. I think what you're also going to see is... Um, the combination of FX markets, which are typically T plus two, um, having to change the way that they're set up to T plus one as well for those clients where they're actually buying dollars or Canadian dollars um, or vice versa selling, right? So I think, you know, there's going to be implications in other parts of the capital market space other than just the uh, security settlements. And can you also talk about what impact T plus one will have on funds usage and what challenges and opportunity that presents for fund managers and investors? Sure. So USITS is a term and a regulatory uh, uh, set up for funds in, 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 in Europe. And the reality is there's some regulations around how much cash is uh, kept. And it's actually 15% of cash that the, the USITS fund manager can keep. And so if you've got a, a client, an investor that's buying into that fund, which is T plus two or T plus three, um, it means that there's a, a cash amount that's sitting around uh, for at least a day before the settlement of the underlying, which is uh, of the fund. So if you've got a fully American or, or Canadian fund that is traded, bought and sold in Europe, the, the uses fund manager is really going to have a, a challenge to be able to place that cash liquidity because they have certain restrictions around that. So it does pose other risks 
uh, outside of the, the North American region. Mm. John, let's talk uh, transitions for a second. Uh, how can technology and automation help with a, a smoother uh, transition into T plus one, uh, the T plus one settlement? And what considerations would be considered or should be considered when implementing new systems and a new infrastructure? Yeah, for, for me, technology should be the only solution that we use to tr to guarantee the smooth tran transition, right? What we've heard, and there was an article published last week at the Financial Times, is that most of the asset managers, the solutions that are finding today is moving their teams to the U.S. or asking their teams to work crazy hours so that they can mm. be able to do that, right? It, it cannot be a human solution. It needs to be a technological solution because it's, you know, it's no risky manual intervention is never good. And two, then the human aspect you're not, you're not taking into consideration when you are doing it from a technology point of view. So for me, technology should be the solution. It shouldn't be just, again, more manual processing. Otherwise, we're moving backwards into into the process. And what about the potential benefits uh, of T plus one for UTI? And how can those benefits be maximized? So as you know, Swift has launched a big initiative called Securities View. And, and part of the Securities View is the fact that we use a unique transaction identifier. And this unique transaction identifier allows for the two parties in a transaction, the buyer and the seller, to be able to see each other's instructions and be able to compare any discrepancies. If you have a T plus one environment, this is very valuable because if you have a unique transaction that tells me this is what my counterparty is saying and I know that they are saying something that I'm not saying, I don't have to wait for that to come uh, a few hours later when I don't have any more time to repair. So everything that I can do from the very beginning, thanks to these common reference that allows me to identify two transactions that are the same, it's going to be very, very powerful. So the UTI adoption is going to be key to the smooth transition to T plus one. So how long is this going to take then, Sam? Uh, let's talk expected timelines for implementing a T plus one settlement cycle for the euro. Uh, and what are the key milestones that need to be achieved along this journey? So I, I think um, just to, 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 to piggyback on what John was saying as well, one of the, one of the aspects is, is that we, 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 there's another piece of information that's come out in a survey this week in the value exchange that says that actually in Euroland and in Asia, um, clients are probably going to start looking for other alternative um, uh, places for settlement and trading of okay. U.S. and Canadian stocks to be able to get T plus two, which kind of give you a sense of how ready they are uh, in, in Europe and in Asia. Um, and that number was like 44% of clients that were in Asia and, and Europe outside of, of North America. But from a, from a Euro uh, zone perspective, uh, I, you know, I think... Everyone's going to be watching what happens next year and see how effective and how successful it becomes uh, and then take a decision as we move into 2025 uh, um, in terms of when that could happen. I think it could happen relatively quickly, uh, certainly on the back of the experience of North America, but it's not going to be before 2025 for sure. Right. John, it's not just T plus one. Let's think beyond that. Where do you think the industry is moving next? Well, I mean, the obvious thing is, and as a technology company, we hope that's the ultimate objective, is that we go for T plus zero or even real-time settlement, right? If, if the, the objectives cannot be just T plus one, right? I think it's a, it's a mere step towards something that is revolutionary, which is T plus zero or atomic settlement. I do think that this is going to depend on many things, but one of the biggest dependencies is going to be on how quickly tokenized or digital assets are adopted, because those assets are, you know, they depend on the usage of a sophisticated technology like blockchain where T plus one is not something that matches, right? Blockchain actually settles or promises to settle in atomic way, meaning in real time. So I hope as a technology uh, firm representing here, I hope that it, the, the objective is to move to T plus zero real time at some point. And Sam, if I can like bat over the same question, an industry past T plus one, what does that look like? I think it works for some products, uh, as John alluded to, you know, digitization will certainly enable that uh, in the digital asset space. Um, but I think if you think about netting and CCP central counterparties and just the aggregation of, 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 of enormous trade flow that then gets into a reduced settlement number of transactions, um, if we settled every single traded transaction, I don't think you know, our world systems will be able to cope with that. So there are some areas, some settlement uh, um, groups of assets that, that I don't think will move to an atomic settlement, but um, it, certainly there is scope there for uh, certain asset groups. 
Uh, Sam, John, we appreciate you taking the time to stop by for a second time for you as well. Uh, we hope that you've had a, a fruitful Cyboss and one more day to go. Thanks so much for joining us. Sam Riley, CEO of Clearstream Security Services. Jonathan Ehrenfeld, Head of Security Strategy at SWIFT. Thanks to both of you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, guys.